Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatore. So sometimes someone commenting under one of my videos actually inspires me to do another video because they um, strike on such a good topic that it gives me an idea for something to talk about and that's worth talking about. And this is one of those occasions. So Ryu Fireheart, I hope I've pronounced your uh, username correctly, made a very astute um, comment and actually something that I've thought myself um, when reading previous things and studying swords and so on. Um, whereby he pointed out, or he or she, I don't know whether you're uh, male or female, but um, they pointed out that um, very often in history and in antique swords and things like this and in stories, we read about a sword which is passed down for generations and used in numerous wars. Um, this is something that we find in East and West, you know, in Asia, Europe, Africa, everywhere else, where a weapon, not even just swords, in fact, swords are often focused on for this, um, but I'm going to focus on swords in this video, but sometimes weapons of, of all sorts, but particularly swords, are passed down for generations as heirlooms within a family um, and are uh, supposedly have been used in numerous um, heroic encounters in the past, sometimes over the course of hundreds of years. And as I say, you know, we find this with Japanese swords, for example, Chinese swords. We find this with uh, European swords as well. And uh, the sort of natural response that uh, Ryu um, has, and in fact that I've had myself in the past as well, has been to say, well, you know, come on, clearly that sword hasn't been used for all of the things that you think that it's been used for, because it's in great condition. Okay, so let's unpack that for a minute. So fundamentally, that can be true. First of all, it could be true. Uh, it could be the case that a sword that has been passed, um, uh, that people think, or it says that have been passed down for generations and used in numerous historical events, battles and sieges and all sorts, wasn't actually the sword that was passed down. Sometimes it could be that that sword um, either wasn't used in those uh, events. It is, and in other words, it's, it is a sword maybe of that time, but it wasn't carried uh, in those events. Maybe that person had several swords and this was just one of them. Uh, someone famous like Tipu Sultan, for example, a famous um, Indian ruler. We know that uh, lots of swords are now in collections, many of them in Britain and one in Italy that I know of. Um, the swords of Tipu Sultan, and they're all the swords of Tipu Sultan, and yes indeed, they may, I think probably not all of them were, but it may be that all of them were the swords of Tipu Sultan, but Tipu Sultan may have owned 200 swords. Uh, so very wealthy people in the Middle Ages, um, or in centuries gone by, have uh, in many cases owned multiple swords. So just because it is the sword of a famous general doesn't mean that that is the sword that they carried on a specific occasion. Even if we go to 19th century British military history, one of my specialisms, if we look at Colin Campbell, for example, I can categorically state that he owned at least two swords because he's pictured with two different swords. Um, so, uh, and he probably had three or four in reality. So, um, the sword that comes down from a specific person may be from the specific person, may be from that time, but doesn't mean that it was carried in all the things that that person did. That's the first thing. The second thing is, it might be a fake, not necessarily a, uh, a modern fake, but it could be a fake from some time long ago that was attributed to that person and actually it actually had nothing to do with them, wasn't carried by them. Okay, so first of all, that's one way how a sword or a couple of ways, a few ways in fact, that a sword in really good condition could come down to us in the 21st century as General X is sword or King or Queen um, something's sword um, and it maybe isn't all that it appears to be in terms of it wasn't used in all of those historical uh, adventures and encounters that that person uh, themselves took part in. That's the first thing. But that's whole one, that's kind of one side of considering this question and that's one way how a, a sword could be in very great condition and might be genuine, might have belonged to that person but might just never have been used much and we'll come on to that point in a second in the second point um, or indeed it may have been that person's sword but they may have had other swords as well okay now that's one side of it okay so it could be genuine it could be fake 
um, and that could explain why it's in good condition. But there's a whole other side of considering this question. So I'll put the katana down for a minute and I'll pick up the longsword. So as I have pointed out in a huge number of videos, um, I think I've got about a thousand videos I've made since I started my channel a few years ago. Um, but I've made this point in numerous, numerous videos that swords very often weren't primary weapons, okay? Um, and there's another point as well, which I'll summarise here and go into greater depth afterwards. Not only were swords often not primary weapons, but often when swords were used, they didn't actually get damaged. Okay, So often when we look at a movie sword fight, or um, a fencing match, or a HEMA, you know, HEMA sparring, we see swords colliding with other swords and doing, uh, smashing into things and smashing other swords quite a lot. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use a sword in combat and actually it won't get damaged uh, for numerous reasons. So anybody who's done any kind of uh, melee fighting, we do melee games sometimes in HEMA, but you may have done reenactment, you may have done LARP or something like that, SCA, this kind of stuff. You will often find that in an actual combat, you might only give a very few number of strikes with your sword. You might hit someone but your weapon might not actually collide with their weapon. Not all fights, unlike in Game of Thrones or something, not all fights are one person fighting this person, bam, 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 we'll have some exchanges, bam, you kill them, and now you fight another person, bam, 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 you kill them, and so on. Not all fights work like that. A lot of the time, it'll be um, two sides moving around, um, you know, interacting with each other, and probably the majority of people with their primary weapons, their pole weapons and stuff doing most of the work. You might see someone over there who's fighting one of your buddies further along the line, and you, uh, you might smack them through the head, and they'll fall to the ground and they're out of the fight. Your sword has been used in a battle, has been used in combat, it chopped through someone's head and killed them, and there is no damage to the sword. There is nothing physically on that sword to see that that was used in that battle, but it was. That's the first thing. The second thing is that swords being um, primary weapons, uh, secondary weapons rather, are often just worn. Um, so I got my points, you may have noticed I reversed the points around there, but anyway. Um, the, the fact is that swords spend most of their time in one of these, in a scabbard. So your famous general from history could indeed have carried this sword at the battle of whatever um, in 15 something, and they might have carried this sword through the entire battle, but their primary weapon would have been a yari, or a spear in this case, or uh, in the case of the European longsword, their primary weapon might have been a poleaxe or a lance. Um, so they may have worn this sword, they may have even wielded this sword in battle, but just it just didn't hit anyone, it didn't do anything with it, because most of the time it was being worn, they were using their lance, or they were fighting with a spear or a poleaxe, or a bill halberd, whatever. They may at some point even have drawn this, they may not have drawn this out of the scabbard, but they may have drawn it out of the scabbard at some point in the battle, but not actually hit anything or anyone with it. And I can categorically state, again, for my specialism in 19th century warfare, many, many times the cavalry or uh, officers, infantry or cavalry officers or artillery officers, drew their swords, but didn't actually hit anything or anyone with them um, because they didn't come close enough to the enemy or because the people that they were fighting got shot or bayoneted before they managed to get to them with their sword. Um, in some cases maybe someone might have thrusted a bayonet at them, they might have parried the same thing if we're talking medieval, might have been a spear or whatever. They may have defended themselves, they may have defended themselves from that attack and then one of their buddies speared them. There's no damage, there's no signs on the weapon. So that's the kind of this whole second section. We've got number one, the sword might have belonged to that person, but might not have been the one that they carried in that battle. Or it might be a fake, it might be from that time, it may not have actually belonged to that person, true. And then the second side of it is, if we assume it genuinely was the sword of Tipu Sultan, or the sword of the Duke of Wellington, or um, King uh, Henry V, whoever you want to consider, okay, and these are all people for who, whom we do have swords, in modern collections attributed to those three people I've just named. Um, it could be that that is genuinely that person's sword, but that sword just never happened to be used in such a way 
that resulted in it being damaged. Okay, so the conclusion, and I guess the line under that topic, is that absolutely it can be that the sword of a famous person can be passed down for, gen for generations and not be damaged and not be in bad condition. It can also be the case that a sword is passed down for generations attributed to a famous person and it kind of wasn't, or if it did belong to them, it wasn't the sword they carried at that famous battle. Um, so it was Henry V's sword, but it wasn't the one he had at Agincourt um, or Hafler. Um, or it could be that it's a sword of that period, maybe actually belonged to someone else uh, in that time, uh, but it wouldn't actually belong to that person we thought, or it could be just a complete out and out fake. Finally, I want to talk about actually swords that do have damage. So if you have a sword, and I'll switch back to the katana for this, if you have a sword that is actually uh, either the sword of the famous person or from that time period, and you'll never know whether it was actually that famous person's sword or not, if you have that sword and it was used in that battle and it did collide with other people's weapons or armour, it will take some damage. And that's something that I think... If you play like video games, for example, it's easy to overlook because your computer rendered weapon, in most games anyway, never get, really gets damaged. Okay? When swords, and I'm not going to bash them together, but when swords collide with other swords or just any other weapons, uh, any other weapons behind me could be shields, it could be helmets. When they collide with other things that are made of hard materials, metal, even sometimes harder woods and uh, things like this, they will take some degree of damage. But even if they take some minor degree of damage, that can be removed in many, many cases. So by re-honing and re-polishing a blade, you can make it look like new again in many cases, but not in all cases. And it depends very much on the degree of damage done to that blade. So if, for example, you take a massive great strike at someone and they, they block it with the edge of their sword because they just go, ah, and just throw their sword up just in time to defend their head, you will probably take a fairly notable notch in your edge. They will take one in theirs. Depending where you've blocked, so if they block with the base of their blade and you uh, are striking obviously with the end part of your blade, your edge geometry there is finer, it's thinner, so you will probably take more damage on, the attacker will probably take more damage on their blade than the defender will. So you might have a notable notch in your edge. Is it possible to remove a notable notch? Well, often not, okay? But these purely edge into, directly edge into edge contacts are, relatively speaking, a minority in most combat. If you're aiming to hit someone and they're aiming to defend themselves, usually you don't end up with a full 90 degrees edge into edge notch. It does sometimes happen by accident or by uh, deliberate, by design. But generally speaking, most contacts of the blade are oblique, are at an angle of some kind, and that means that, that usually you don't get super deep notches into edges, but it can happen. So some damage can't be removed, some damage can be removed, and one of the very common types of damage you do get evidence for on swords, we're talking about specifically here, is actually scratching on the surface. So when blades come into contact with each other, you do often get um, uh, scratches in the flat of the blade, and they're not so difficult to remove. By polishing, they can be removed. So again, that sword could have been used in a battle, could have subsequently been rehoned resharpened and repolished, and there might be no sign of damage on it. It might be that it never sustained any damage, and we'll never know. So there we go. I hope that kind of addresses that topic. Um, I think absolutely sometimes swords that are passed down for generations from famous people did genuinely belong to those famous people. Unfortunately, unless there are photographs or documents to verify it, we usually don't know whether that sword was specifically used in that action. There are exceptions. Once we get into the 19th century, there are exceptions because often we've got pictures, paintings, and photographs even of these famous people. I used Colin Campbell as an example. Duke of Wellington is another one. We do sometimes know specific swords that were carried at specific actions, like the Battle of Waterloo or um, the Siege of Lucknow or whatever. Um, so it does happen sometimes that we know a specific weapon was at a specific place. If that weapon's not damaged, don't think that that somehow means that it's a fake. It can simply be that the weapon 
either wasn't used, it spent all its time in its scabbard, or it was used, it was in the hand, but it didn't happen to be used in combat per se, or even if it was used in combat, sometimes the things that happen in combat don't result in any damage, or finally, if it was used in combat and it got some minor damage, the sword could have been resharpened or repolished and you wouldn't see any sign of that damage anymore anyway. And finally, sometimes there are some swords that were used in those um, events, uh, you know, battles and stuff, duels, and there is damage visible on the blade. And that's really cool um, because you know what, or well, at least if we have all the facts tied together, you know what that damage is from and you know what caused it. And I do know in the world of antique swords, I do know of at least two or three antique swords owned by friends of mine that have damage on them, uh, both the hilt and the blade, and that damage is literally described in the accounts of the period. So I know from uh, one fight uh, during the Indian Mutiny, for example, where the person writes an account of, of the fight, and he says, during the fight, the hilt of my sabre was damaged, and the sabre that is still in a person's collection who I know has the damage visible on the hilt still, which is great because you've got the history and the, the, the sword itself tying completely perfectly um, into a perfect kind of um, story. Anyway, I hope that's been uh, interesting and thought provoking. Share your thoughts below. As always, please subscribe if you haven't done and click the no notification bell um, if you'd like to. Um, give us a like, share the videos, share um, the word of this channel and thank you very much for your support and watching extra videos on Patreon. I'll see you very, very soon uh, for another video on Scholar Gladiatoria. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.